8 Robinsons TV presents a Yellow Tub Creative Production. The Rooted in Love Show. You are watching The Rooted in Love Show. Welcome back to The Rooted in Love Show. Yeah, We're here with Mr. Ty Ridgeway. Got us laughing off camera. <laughs> um, Try to get a straight face. We we trying to keep a straight face, but this these these two guys right here. <laughs> That's why they put us apart. See, <laughs> but it did work. We should flex them right there. We're gonna see each other. Uh, just, see, uh, I see what they're doing. I didn't know that they flexing their oh, shoes. I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Yeah, Hold, on. Hold, on. Hold, Hold on. 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 No, I'm flexed the socks. Come on, stretch boy. Y'all no, ain't got five cold socks. Wicked Williams has that uh, shoe, shoe, shoe cam thing she does. And she right. has a uh, mold on the floor or something. And the guests are supposed to put their shoe in there or something like that. Okay. It's a, it's a, a, a staging thing. Like, so yeah. they got a spot they have to put it on. And yeah. right. the camera gets it. Yeah. Well, it's so actually right. centered center just right. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to shoe, add that shoe, in. Shoe cam. That's all right. That's yeah, all we have cam. a lot of fun with it though. Been, been, uh, it's been good. It's been good. We're having good, good talks. I forgot what we left off. Well, we were, we were talking about college, which was a good time, man. Yeah, so, yeah, you yeah, know, that's that's college, college is always fun. A little bit of, well, little bit of learning, a little Georgia bit of stuff and whatnot. So, so you graduated. I did. So, all right, so college yeah, was fun. Check that purse. You made it, right? Did I? <laughs> Wait, that was some shady years. I don't, yeah, yeah, no, I got a degree on the wall. We're good. Um, all right, okay, so had a lot of fun learning how to be a, a public educator and teach music in, okay. in the school systems. All right, so I came out of the University of Georgia with a few years' experience in the Red Coat Marching Band and um, and some experience as a uh, music educator, just kind of learning more because right. man, college life is different than high school, and yeah, y'all all know where you. you grow in weird places when you're away from your parents and yeah and that's just fun I, I i think i chose the just the right distance they were about 35 minutes away so it was like Safe. it was a little too far for them to just pop in right but it was really easy to go home and get a free meal and get my laundry done yeah. right if, <laughs> I, if, okay. if i had to but i was right. really independent guys when i moved yeah. out at 18 and moved into my first apartment i never moved back home gotcha. i never intend to unless my parents uh, would, would always say you can and are, are welcome, you know, that's family. Yeah. We're, we're always welcome back home. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like I had to leave, but I wanted to be independent and show right. how I could. All right, so um, nonetheless, college was great. It was a good time. Left college. Uh, as I was finishing up college, met my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. She was in the band. She was on the flag line. And we started dating. It was an interesting situation. We used to do these sousaphone flag line date nights. In red in red coats. Interesting. And so the whole sousaphone section would take out the flag line. Okay. E e <laughs> <laughs> even if uh, <clears throat> sometimes, even if uh, <laughs> even if we had boyfriends and girlfriends, we were just really good friends. And 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 the way it worked out that night is um, she actually had a boyfriend at the time, and I was paired up with her. She was she was my my date for the night. All right. So we did it the gentleman way, man. You go pick them up. And, and you give them a ride to the right. restaurant, you open the door and all. We, we did it right. And I knew she had a boyfriend, so it was never an intent to, to move in anyway. But about two weeks after that, she broke up with him and asked me if I was still available. And um, from from then on, we were together. You're still doing it. You're um, doing good. It was a bigger, better deal. I, I, he was taller than me. But, yeah, <laughs> and, and she's not with me anymore. So I don't know if I was better or not. But it, I, I was a, I was a, a good... Uh, interlude at least so how long did this um so we we were an arrangement well last? uh we we finished up the the school year and everything graduated um she went on to work on her master's and i came to uh, the clayton county area to start teaching mm -hmm. and you started out in clayco so, so we i did i started Ooh. out at riverdale reefadale killadale um yeah, 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 uh, yeah. <laughs> what, whatever you want to call it we were on lockdown a yeah. lot um, we had the spray paint graffiti off the side of the walls. All right. so I broke up a few trenches. It was good. It was good. But I have to admit, man, straight up, uh, coming from small town country, Franklin County, going to UGA, mm -hmm. where we were still talking 80 to 90 percent white population, yeah, this, right. this is a and 10 percent. The other, I mean, I'm talking otherwise, not just not just African American right. population, but like Asian Mexican, and, everything, right, Mexican right. and everybody else, right? So that not a lot. Um, I had one white student. Wow. Yeah. And she was definitely way more ghetto than any of <laughs> my African American students right. when I came to. Right. And so, yeah. so for me, it was definitely a like a, a, a demographic issue or a culture issue because um, 
just because of her skin tone didn't make her not right. Well, anyway, I don't mm-hmm. get into personal mm-hmm. conversations there. She was a good kid. Nonetheless, it was a very different world for me. Um, right. Very different world for me. And I tried to adapt as quickly as I could, but there's only so much you can do in a short period of time. Right. The the, the thing I think really that helped me um, survive is just that I, I try to love as much as I can. And, and I, right. And, and for me, I was always, like I said, I was blessed to not have that, right. that color filter. Right. And, and when I walked into that, I saw... I saw underprivileged children that came from broken homes. Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't see black folks. Right. I didn't see white folks. Right. None of that mattered. It was that these kids uh, strongly desired and were were being denied something that I could potentially right. provide. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny, yeah. man. Actually, uh, my name's Ty, but most people assume it's probably Tyler or maybe just Ty. Right. It's actually Tyrus. Tyrus. Wow. And, oh, I thought it was like Tyler or something. More okay. often I didn't than not. You know what? I didn't even know I that. was hoping it was Tyrone. It's Tyrus. <laughs> but not quite. Almost. Um, Tyrus. More often than not, when my students would find out that my name was Tyrus, one of the first questions they would ask was, are your parents black? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The names is automatic. Yeah. So, I mean, the first time I had that asked, I went... I do that with kids and they bust out No? Now. <laughs> Why are you asking me? Like, uh, okay. Yeah. But it's, and I don't even, I don't think about it that way either because, right. okay, because for one, I only ever knew one other kid named Tyrus my whole life until I was in my 30s and he was black, but, <laughs> but I just didn't think about it because right. we there was two of us, so I didn't have like a weighted yeah. demographic to work with. Right. There's one white one and one black one. I don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's way, what's normal. Right. Yeah. You know? So, um, my name actually comes from a famous baseball player. That's, if you follow baseball, you may know Ty Cobb. Yes. So Ty Cobb's full name is Tyrus Raymond I Cobb. I never knew that either. Rachel. And, gotcha. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and my grandmother, my uh, father's my father's mother, that grandmother, and Ty Cobb were first cousins. Oh, wow. Their mothers were actually sisters. So my, my oh, great-grandmother... Wow was a Chitwood and Ty Cobb's mother were was a Chitwood and they yeah. married into two different families. But that's what I'm dad's top name. He's yeah. he's Chitwood. what you would like, I guess, uh, on paperwork call my first cousin twice removed. Okay. Um, have you been to his home? I, he's a historical I grew home. up in Royston where he's Ty right Cobb there. grew up. Yeah. My mom was actually the curator of the Ty Cobb Museum. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, I I have a, a signed baseball that my dad has still at the house that's uh, signed by Ty Cobb. Yeah. A lot of memorabilia. My, my grandmother and grandfather remember him coming to the house to visit often. Uh, so I grew up hearing stories of Ty Cobb as a, a person. Yeah. My dad actually met him in person right. uh, before he passed away in, in the 60s. But, mm. um, that made me feel bad. So that's where my name comes from. Okay. Is actually from another white guy. So I, I didn't yeah, I remember is. think like Tyrus is right. a black name. Right. Uh, whatever that means. Right. That's probably a good connection right. with the kids though. Like, you know, you have yeah. the odd connection. But yeah, they, they were like, that Tyrus, name Ty, they can talk about. that's a cool name. But your parents were white, and they were like, I was like, yeah, they're just cool folks. You know, right. Because when you say it, Tyrus, I'm thinking 300 and the Romans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking yeah. like an even further back. Yeah, I'm thinking like 300. Yeah, you know, like, like, so I don't even yeah, think about it. Yeah. You, yeah. Messed, you messed me up with the Ty Cobb thing, because when I moved to Georgia, yeah. you know, the first thing that Georgia Peach. I used to play uh, golf and tennis with Hank Aaron. Okay, uh, awesome. When he, when he was uh, viable and uh, uh, he was a hell of, hell of a man. Hell of a man. Didn't realize he was into golf that much. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll add that to my. He's called me up. Hey, we're going to go out to uh, White Columns. I said, I'll be right there. Right on, man. Uh, it was an honor, you know, because I moved to Very Atlanta good. and got with the right, some right people. Because, you know, right. we did things the old fashioned way. You move yeah. from D.C., get to, uh, to wherever you live in, there's letters of introduction. If right. you're at a certain level mm-hmm. that allows you into certain areas. You can be like introduced that. to yeah. certain Right. Areas. So, uh, mm-hmm. Ty Cobb, you know, was uh, a figure that in. Um, in my community, that wasn't um, revered in that way. Yeah, revered. <laughs> no, for his game. Yes. No, I know what you said. But as a person, but as a no, person, I told was different. Was, yeah. And, and it's interesting because the the Hollywood view of him is very different than the actual view. Yeah. Because my family stories talk about him coming down to the hood in Royston and handing out oh, twenty dollar and fifty dollar bills that, that's what, to yeah. the impoverished people in the hood. Right. Um, my grandfather could just kick himself. Shop for Rooted in Love Show merchandise.
at www.the8robinsons.com. To the impoverished people in the hood. Right. Um, my grandfather could just kick himself, and he's passed on now, but when he was alive, he used to just kick himself because... You know, Ty always signed with his signature green ink. Yeah. And he would send a letter home to my grandparents and say, hey, I need this from the local market, that from the local market, this from so-and-so. Here's a blank check. Just pick everything up. Yeah. Fill out the check to pay yourself back for whatever. And my grandfather would, one, he would never fill out the check and take the money because Ty was family. You can take money from family yeah. if you right. have to. Right. So and then he would, he would tear up the checks and throw them in the trash. Oh, hey, can, you, can you imagine what a those no, letters, he those hand signed letters? Yeah. Actually, when you said uh, baseball and memorabilia, I was like, you have a retirement already. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Big no, retirement. I don't know. I got thrown in the trash, man, because it's family. Because nobody right. cares. But you know what? This this <laughs> kind of thing right here, this kind of communication, because now you have totally changed my mind about me too. Because I meet because I meet you Been okay. and a family, a family. I, I was in the movie and I hated it. Oh, you I was in it, but I also hated it. Yeah, it yeah. had so many lines. Well, what part yeah. you was in? I, I don't remember that. This was back when I was ten, right. and there was a there was a, a scene where he was up on a courtyard steps, uh, talking to a community out in front of him. Yeah. And I came running through the front of the community, yelling, "Yeah, I'm about to look that up." And, and, uh, and then I, you know, yeah. I was all decked out with the, the cap and all. I'm about to look that up. And ran That's over good. actually to my good. mom and stood cap. in front of her, but you don't see her. Oh, and then. Yeah. And then there was a couple of church scenes in there where they needed uh, people that could sing well enough to hold up a tune, and so I was in the congregation singing church songs. Okay, uh, but, but I'm you don't see I'm my with face what William that. said. Like we always talk about root in love. I remember yeah, when yeah. I was telling you about what the show is about, and you might have an opinion, or you might think a certain way, but it's only because the information that's available. Perception, that you have. Is perception perspective, all of it, right? So here you reality. come telling us from a first oh, I'm, I'm like, the view that. Idea, but yeah, not denying everything that was said, <laughs> but this is what he core is core what he did. Yeah. That's amazing. Thing. And 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 I'll say, I mean, everything we hear about from the family was, yeah, he was he was a dickhead on the field. Yeah. He was he was a hardcore athlete that played hit within his limitations, but right at the edge of them. Yeah, yeah. Right. But he was a successful athlete. But that's what you want. That's not what he did. Though, you know? um, the stories about him filing his cleats and stuff like that. I'm not going to say it's not true, but it wasn't as prominent as people would like right. to think it is. Yeah. Did it happen? Sure, but not all the time. But if you think about that, though, what's the difference between that, right? And then I don't know if people seen The Last Dance with uh, Michael Jordan, right? Okay. And how the teammates talked about him and mm -hmm. like he, he's hardcore, he's yeah. hardcore, and he didn't let him eat on the, the plane intensity. and he didn't do this, right? Uh, how teammates talked about Kobe Bryant, right? How sure. Kobe was they're so, so focused, and so intense yeah. all the time. Yeah, I'm like that. I used to get in fights and like you're not gonna come in here no half step, and we I'm trying to win. We gotta get it done. We gotta practice. Like right we, we got five more minutes left. You ain't talking to your girlfriend so yet. So lose control now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so he was, like he was a hardcore that. hustler, and I'm sure there were people that would have similar stories from your perspective about Hank Aaron uh, from both sides, because, uh, you know, and, and, and let's just talk about the four of us here. Everybody that's met us has a different opinion of us. Oh, yeah. So um, I would like to think that my energy and persona comes across positive all the time, but it doesn't. Yeah. Right. It doesn't because I'm in a bad mood sometimes, man. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. and I'll tell you, you know, um, we hadn't talked a lot about religion yet in this other than the fact that I was in the church and singing the choir, but I'll tell you, the first thing I do every morning when I get up, the first thing I do before I even open my eyes a lot of times is thank God for letting me open my eyes and right. see another day. Right. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't have to. Right. And and I pray that whatever I do that day will be for his glory. Right. No matter no matter how bad a mood I'm in, no matter how rude I'm I get mad at somebody in traffic, right? right. And I'm glad I don't have a gun because I'm about to shoot your ass because you just cut me off. Right. Well, I got to remember that. that God will take time. that and say, you know what? That guy was a dick, but this is how, you know, that whatever I do, whether I'm good or bad in it, that God will use it for his glory. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm not always perfect. Yeah. But well, he, he can he can use my actions to help to be a road rage. Uh, this is the <laughs> naval uh, captain who told me that. And she was, uh, we were working in Texas and you know, Texas is a rough group. Group, the whole state is rough. <laughs> I was a school in Texas. So everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah. So she would 
Cause she was she was small, yeah. so she couldn't like mouth off at nobody. So what she did was took a, a twig, a branch, and put it in the dashboard. And then when someone pissed her off, she would take it and just shake it like this, not directly at them. Yeah. Cause, you know they want like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know mistaken for a piece or yeah. something. So she would do this. And she right. said people were freaked out. Thanks again. Like you're like, you like, like a wand at her. Oh, 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 and it worked. I was like, damn. All right. This is a problem. We can, we can right. move with that. Uh, hey, look, it levels you out. Exactly. Right. At the same time that it, 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 it allows them to realize what they did without putting that energy in their body too. Cause, exactly. Because more often than not, we react to our situation. And, and if you come across with some really hard negative energy, the first thing they're going to do is try to protect themselves, whether they're capable of it or not. They're right. going to come back at you with a protective negative energy. It's yeah. not always, yeah, not always what we need. That that's how yeah. things escalate. That's how things respond, not react. Right, response, not react. Right. Right. <laughs> response, <laughs> not like, reaction. Like, that's think right. About it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I, I started, doing, started doing all like this. I said, sure. I started yeah. doing all like this. I said, you know, I can stomp the crap out of you right now. But <laughs> you know what? <laughs> just say, just say, I'm, yeah. place, I'm not gonna let you change my energy. So we won't, we won't go about. If you know who I am. So let's let's revert back to the original conversation real quick. I started teaching uh, choir at Riverdale. I was a band director out of high out of, out of college. You got some trained in, trained in, in, in instrumental music as a bassoonist, but <coughs> having background in, yeah. in marching band and a few other things. Quick side so, more questions. At sure. this point, the your ex is she still doing a masters or y'all still? We're talking still engaged. Traveling? We're still engaged. She's working on her masters at West Georgia because she was getting gotcha. masters in museum studies and history. And believe it or not, West Georgia has one of the best museum studies programs in the nation. Yes, okay. uh, and so, so her her goal there. So she was she was studying at West Georgia, getting her master's degree. She was working for the Secretary of State, and then during a, a period of that, was actually working for the Atlanta History Museum. Okay. As a, um, uh, I forget exactly what she was doing. She was oh, working, yeah. working in the archives. She actually spent some time working at the National Archives in. Um, McDonough, Morrow? Right, I think it's right, right, right around that area, the National yeah. Archives, right side of Atlanta. Well, what about um, on the board of Atlanta History Center for, for a while? Then. Right on, yeah. right on. That's awesome. They may know each other. Um, but anyway, she um, she was doing all that stuff. And so for a little while, she had an apartment in Carrollton, and I was living in Peachtree City. But because mm -hmm. of Clayton County, Carrollton relation, Union City was in the middle. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, <clears throat> And trying to be like that, but I was not trying to live in Union City. Yeah, I'm about to say, you right. even, Union City? even back then, I was not <laughs> trying to live in Union City. Now, you it's, already branded. It was already uh, a place that, okay. that I did not want to live. So, no, right. so no, I did not live in Union City, but Peachtree City was just south of that. Right. And I knew some folks from that area, and it was, right. it was a good time to move there. It's a great community to move into. So, right. Oh, yeah. I bought, a house in, bought a house in Peachtree City. Uh, Talk for the first year, we got married, she moved in, all that, blah, blah, blah. We were married for about a year, that didn't work out. She moved on, was remarried six months later to the guy that she was cheating on me with while we were married. But, wow. um, okay. anyway, um, it. All, all that, and then, um, so my first year, I went in hoping to be a band director, but was a choir director. Mm. And, and not only choir director, but I get halfway through student teaching and the guy that they hired from, um, from, sorry, I'm having a brain fart, LSU, mm -hmm. who had a master's in acting from LSU and, and theater mm -hmm. to be the, the theatrical arts teacher and, and head of that department, comes to me and says, hey, so um, I was supposed to be teaching all the theater classes, but they gave me three English classes and two mm -hmm. theater classes, and you get to teach the other two. This was three days into pre-planning. <laughs> Figure it out. Uh -huh. And he's like, I'll be glad to help, but you're going to have to teach two of these classes. Right. So, yeah, so my first year I got to teach theater. And I literally went home every night and read the book and learned my lesson yeah. the night before and went in and taught the lesson the next day and then went home and, and tried to work it out again. Um, loved that year. Learned a lot. It was awesome. So many cool people in that right. building. Just a great environment uh, when it came to the education um, second year did a combo with Riverdale and Forest Park because Forest Park okay. had cut their choral program completely. 
So I helped them restart their coral program, and then at that point went to the uh, the fine arts magnet, the Marcus mm-hmm. Stillwell School for the Arts, mm-hmm. and Derek Jackson and I worked together in the band department. He, he okay. a lot more jazz oriented, and worked with those guys as like improv and stuff like that. Right. And then, I taught, uh, I worked with the wind ensemble. I worked a little bit with the orchestra, even though there was an orchestra director, we worked with some of the wind ensemble stuff. And then I taught uh, piano and first year music theory while I was there. Um, we did a couple of, um, we did a couple of events each year, like nice, we did high school musical yeah. one year, we did a couple of, we did at least two full musicals each year. And we had a pit orchestra of our own students Mm. playing the live music for the pit orchestra right. with our students acting on stage and our kids were helping backstage. It was just, it was a great experience for all of them to see how the world can really work in a real life situation. Not just, I'm going to go say my line on the stage and then go right. back and my mom is going to tell me she's proud of me. Right. Um, all right. So went through those two and then uh, two years at the Fine Arts Magnet, I came across an opportunity to do a cross country bike tour on a bicycle. And could, just couldn't turn down the opportunity. So this is so, biking started. Or you, this is I had already kind of started biking. Right. I've been cycling for about a year. Mm-hmm. Rich, Rich and I used to cycle together right. a lot. Oh, I forgot. That's what he's from. And, Lilo. Okay, okay. So right. we used to live next door to each other, right? So, uh, right. so, so we used to ride together. I, I got out 132. Yes, yes. definitely. Yes. I hadn't gotten to that, but I was going to throw out a lot of stuff later on. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. pottery 32. Yeah. Amazing guy. Um, so. You know what? That's a great story, and we and there's a lot in there. So we're gonna pick up after this. Let's talk we'll about the. Break. Let's talk about the, the the next thing that happened. Yes. After this happens. Yes. We're gonna come right back. Well, I, I, I want to get into.